going on, guys? Um, welcome back to Atrial's Havoc Den. Um, we are doing one more interview today. We're going to be getting Williams two cents. Uh, he's been conducting the interviews, and since we figured it's best that he doesn't talk to himself, we are going to let me be hosting this one. What's going on, William? How's it going? It's nice to not be the interviewer and have all the pressure on me this time. I'm uh, glad you get all the pressure of asking the hard-hitting questions here. So you think being the interviewer has more pressure than being the interviewee? Oh, absolutely. 110. After conducting three of them thus far, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I, I guess I can see what you mean. It probably... um. Because it kind of falls on you to have the questions ready to go to be like asking people. Yeah, I mean, and also, like, so if like, the conversation dies, you look like a jackass. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> exactly. So it's pretty much on you to keep it flowing and keep it like good and interesting. And on top of that, I feel a lot more comfortable because I'm assuming, I don't know that for a fact, but you may be asking some questions that I've already like asked you guys and therefore had my own opinions then thinking about it so and if not i'm sure i'm prepared yeah um i've got a few new ones but yeah i would like to go ahead and start off and you know just to uh, get almost come full circle kind of thing um ask some similar questions so uh let's start with the influences man what you what you got i mean i think uh pretty sure i know what a lot of them are but uh let's let let's let the people know all like three of them all three of them <laughs> well, I mean, my favorite band of all time is, of course, Slipknot. I mean, it always will be. They uh, have had such an impact on my musical taste for so long that they're hard to beat. Whenever I heard Before I Forget on Guitar Hero 3, that just yeah. it, it, it hit really hard. And But then the thing was, is I didn't really know who they were or had to know about with YouTube. I mean, that wasn't, that was barely a thing at the time. Um, and, uh, so really I didn't get into, into Slipknot for another like year. Whenever, uh, like me and Christopher have known each other are since we were like three or four. Um, but he showed me Slipknot whenever we were like 10, I think. And, yeah, more than uh, likely. Yeah, and and whenever I saw it was right before, literally they were. It was it was great timing. He showed me Slipknot and showed me like before I forget and showed me their music videos, which scared the shit out of me. By the way, I was completely terrified. I mean, as a, like a <laughs> a pretty sheltered little kid, they uh, blew yeah. my mind a little bit, and um. But he showed me them, and the music was so good that it made me get over my fear of their masks and everything at the time to listen to them. And then all of a sudden, Psychosocial came out. The first single off of Dead of uh, All Hope is Gone. So good timing. Yeah. Uh, do you remember what that first music video was? Was it Before I Forget? Yeah, it was Before I Forget and then Duality. Um, oh, dude, duality is a fucking wild one to start out with. Du yeah, duality is is my second favorite Slipknot. No, actually, that's a lot. It's my favorite Slipknot video. It's it's yeah. so good, dude. The, the, the and hearing the lore behind that video made it so much better that they got sued and everything because they they they, they rented that property for the day. And the property owner had no idea that that's what they were going to do. And uh, <laughs> Dude, I didn't know that. He's, yeah, so he sued <laughs> Roadrunner, I believe. Or I don't exactly remember if it was Roadrunner or Slipknot themselves. But I know somebody was sued. But it is what it is. And it, it turned out great. And it was worth the uh, the legal repercussions. repercussions. <laughs> oh, easily. Dude, that is totally their coolest music video, man. No doubt. I mean, I I listen to that song and watch that music video 30 40 times a year easily <laughs> what do you think of uh what do you think of Corey's what you call it uh volume three mask as compared to the rest of them i mean that was the first mask i saw of his and it plays like a 
heavy role with like I don't know my my I don't know I, I in my favorite masks of his I guess you should, could say yeah. I feel like personally my favorite mask is still the all hope is gone mask um and but that one is probably my second favorite and then honestly his newest one dude is fucking sick it is sick but and i think that if this mask had been used during that time i would probably put it higher but for nostalgia's sake those masks rank top yeah it's too early on right now to uh rank the new one any higher but it could easily end up being my favorite like in the future oh yeah for sure and you know, moving on, uh, moving on a little bit from Slipknot here. Like, I mean, you know this. Like, Bring Me the Horizon uh, has they weren't originally one of my like favorite bands. I mean, they they definitely became one of my favorite or had one of my favorite albums uh, with uh, Simp Eternal coming out in 2013. That was just a damn good year for music. Th- 2013 really helped like put my uh musical taste like together i mean uh from death to destiny came out which of course i was already a huge asking alexandria fan wretched and divine by black veil brides which is the the only album of theirs i mean i like their stuff before that too that i, I was heavily into that album and um of course simp eternal and you yeah. know, bring me the horizon has just i loved I've loved all of their albums, truly. Like, I know, like, they get a lot of shit because they change, they try and do new stuff, which, in all honesty, I think is really cool and keeps it interesting. If they did the same album, if they wrote Simp Eternal four more times now, most people would have stopped listening to them, I'd say. Yeah. And I, uh, I think you're right. I think um, that they definitely keep their audience engaged whether they lose old fans or not they're gaining new ones more rapidly than they're losing old ones for damn sure oh yeah and i i truly believe that they at heart know they're a metal band and they are a metal band but that doesn't mean they don't enjoy pushing what is the new version of metal you know um yeah they uh i like the fact that they're keeping you know they're kind of keeping it in the limelight a little bit i'd say they're probably one of the biggest like rock bands in the world right now wouldn't you think oh yeah for sure i mean they have much they they they're beating out they're definitely the number one most listened to uh like metal band in terms of like Spotify numbers right now, I mean they they beat out Slipknot and stuff like that. Like I don't know about stuff like Metallica, uh, but when it comes to like younger metal bands, yeah, like newer uh, stuff. Yeah, and of course, I mean we can get to my last real influence, which you know is Asking Alexandria, and uh, you can once again thank old Christopher for that. He posted another bottle down on facebook whenever we were little yeah and uh i don't know we were like little we were like 14 and uh i heard it there and i just fell in love with that that album and um you know really i still really enjoy asking alexandria i do and of course we owe a lot i personally owe a lot to ben from asking because i mean he's he's done a lot of stuff for me literally personally which is insane for my teenage brain to think um we can thank him for us really getting this this deal with blood blast and everything um and which that'll be a whole nother story in of itself eventually but uh yeah, and that, that played a huge influence in, you know, not only what I listened to, but, like, even sense of style-wise, like, I was like, I mean, they uh, they played, uh, I mean, that, that's who I thought of as rock stars and what a rock star should look like, you know, for my Yeah, they were definitely that band for our generation, for sure. Um, you know, because, you know, us coming up and the early 2010s basically 
If you enjoyed this, go check out Atrial's Havoc Den on Spotify for the full podcast.